everyone, it's Reagan, and welcome to the start of a work week reading vlog. You guys seem to really enjoy these, um, but welcome to Monday. I just wrapped up work, and I'm gonna be vlogging the next five work days. Um, this work week I'm really excited about. It's currently the 4th of May. May the 4th be with you. And I took a few days off of reading because last month I read 10 books, and now I am hoping to continue that momentum. Took a few days off, but now I'm very much in the reading spirit. And I'm really excited about the book I am hopefully gonna finish either tonight or tomorrow. And then the next book I plan to pick up. This week, I obviously don't have very much going on. Tonight, I do have plans to meet up with my friend Emily virtually via Animal Crossing to give her an island tour. And then we're gonna watch MTV The Challenge from last week, we're a little behind, which I'm really looking forward to. But to quickly show you the books I hope to read because I'm pumped about them. So here they are. First and foremost, I'm reading The Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. I'm almost done with this guy. I have 150 pages, actually less than that, left. And I am so into this. This has just started to be unput downable. I described it to Clay last night when he came and he was like, you're still awake? I was like, this book, like it's like a pot of water. You're in it. You're like, oh, this is nice. Like interesting interesting and then all of a sudden you're being boiled alive and everything is just wrong and you just need to figure out what is going on like that is where i'm at with this book and it's so good so i'm really excited to finish this in the next few days and then i'm obviously going to start another book i'm either going to pick up the guest list which is a kind of a whodunit thriller book which is really intriguing to me or just go ahead and immediately jump into shorefall which came in the mail today by robert jackson bennett I'm unsure. I feel like this would be like a really nice quick palette cleanser and then read this this weekend. I don't know. We'll see. But those are my reading plans. I'm about to start cooking dinner because I'm starving and I want to eat before I meet up with Emily. Um, it's already past six, but I wanted to first document that I got dressed today. I'm about to change to pajamas, but before I do, look, I'm wearing jeans and a blouse. I really like this blouse. It's like embroidered. It's really cute, but... Yeah, I'm about to go make some dinner. We're gonna do bulgogi bowls tonight. I'm really excited. And here's Matilda. She's excited to have another vlog to be the center of attention in. Isn't that right, Matilda? Mm-hmm. Sure are. And then I'm hoping to also be able to do a bit of reading after dinner. So that's why I'm starting to cook early because I just want to read. <laughs> I changed into this uh, free people lounge set. It comes like together. I think it's sold out. It kind of looks like a diaper, but it's really comfortable. So, you know, I don't mind. Then obviously I'm wearing my slippers. All right. I'm making some beef bulgogi bowls for dinner, which I am thrilled about. Super fast and easy too. Rice. I'm about to shave this cucumber and pickle them. Rice is cooking. I'm also eating my appetizer, which is some Cheetos. But yeah. Time to get cooking. Got some shredded carrots cooked. Sriracha sauce, green onions, some butter for that rice. We got the beef, cook it away, and the bulgogi sauce. And the rice is just about done. So I'm about to eat and I'm so excited. My crema distribution, not the best, but it's gonna be delicious. So the bon appetit. You guys wanna see something funny? <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I'm pretty sure Clay did this. <laughs> Just doing what we do best. Isn't that right, Millie? Hi, pal. So I have been wasting all sorts of time watching the challenge and hanging out with Emily in her adorable Animal Crossing town. Very impressed. And she also was kind enough to order me some beach towels. And those, those should be my mailbox tomorrow, which I am just jazzed about. They're gonna look great on my beach. I also have lots of new ideas. I'm just, I'm gonna be focused on getting the rest of my villagers now so I can get paths. Like I need to just finish, get all my people in town so I can, you know, continue on with this game here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we need to get this party started. I need to be able to do some terraforming and some path work. Um, I also need to focus on getting more bells, but now I'm just rambling, rambling, rambling. But now I'm going to read The Royal Assassin. I've been so excited to read this all day, and then of course I kill so much time doing anything but reading, which is just like, of course. But I'm going to do it now, and I'm really pumped about it, and I'm hoping to read 
Like a good. And I'm hoping to read like a good 60 pages tonight and finish it up tomorrow and then start a new book. So that is my plan and I'm gonna stick to it. So I'm gonna get to reading now. It's like at a boiling point. I really could not put it down last night, but I needed to because I stayed up till 1 a.m. reading. Happy Tuesday, everyone. I'm very dressed today, which is rare and unusual, but I'm really a big fan of my outfit. The skirt is from Anthropology, and it's this beautiful like chambray embroidery, and then this red top is just from Madewell. But it's 10 a.m. I have a call, so I gotta go. But just wanted to say hello, good morning. I stayed up really late last night reading. I read 50 pages, so I should be able to finish my book tonight. I made these banana chocolate chip muffins over the weekend and they're so good. They're definitely on their last legs now, but I have more bananas because I honestly think I'm gonna make these on like Thursday evening. I can't stop eating them, they're delicious. So for lunch today, we're gonna do potato leek soup from Goodstock. Goodstock is one of my favorite local restaurants and they actually have online soup delivery where you can buy their soups frozen, delivered right to your door. It's awesome. You can actually buy them across the country. I love them. I've been buying their suits for a long time, but given that Clay and I are both working from home, this has been the perfect fast work option because I don't always have time to cook, neither does Clay, like a full on lunch. So just reheating soup is great. And they're so, 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 so good. I made some bacon in the oven to sprinkle on top and I'm gonna top these with cheese. But overall, these are like really not that bad for you. This whole thing is 250 calories. They always have a bunch of vegetables in there it's also a great way to ensure that i get some vegetables otherwise i'm pretty sure my diet would be all cheetos and pizza rolls so i'm gonna heat this up really fast and then eat lunch just like that lunch is done i topped it with that bacon i made of course made a mess and cheese hi everyone so it's tuesday after work and i've changed i'm wearing my star wars shirt which i'm now realizing i should have put on yesterday it's an absolutely beautiful evening um, and Clay and I just like, you know, sat outside for a second and just hung out. But now it is a little after seven. I'm going to start reading. And the thing is I was planning on cooking dinner tonight. We have food to cook. Um, it's not going to go to waste or anything, but, um, if you're familiar with the New York pizza scene at all, we live relatively near this place called Lou Collies, which is a, an incredibly famous pizza place and if you've seen ugly delicious it's the pizza place in the first episode it's beyonce's favorite pizza <laughs> point is it's so delicious it's impossible to get into it's like hours upon hours upon hours upon hours of waiting especially on the weekend um and they don't do like takeout or delivery but given everything that's going on, they're doing takeout now. And usually takeout orders are filled immediately and you can only order like one pizza and there's like one option for the day kind of thing. So we trolled our Instagram and we're like, let's just call, let's just see what happens. It's seven o'clock on a Tuesday, like what's gonna happen? And they're like, oh yeah, we're taking orders. Can you be here in 20 minutes? So Clay was like, yes, one pepperoni pizza. So we're eating pizza tonight instead of the planned dinner I was going to make, but I'll just cook it tomorrow, not a big deal. Um, I've eaten here before personally with my nine to five with work. We went as like a team. We were able to get in for like an event basically, um, for with one of the partners we work with. It's, that's not relevant. Point is it's delicious pizza. Clay is thrilled, um, because he's never eaten there before and it's impossible to get in on the weekends. And normally he's not around for like dinner time during the week. So anyway, he's going to take a stroll, pick up the za gonna be very good I'm very much looking forward to it in the meantime I'm going to sit here and do some reading of the royal assassin as I think I said last this morning I read 50 pages so I have about 100 pages of this book left so I'm gonna sit down and read a chunk now while I wait for Clay to get the pizza um but yeah just wanted to give you a heads up of our our change of plans it's all about the pizza tonight pretty jazzed about it <laughs> but regardless I'm gonna read Lacalli's has arrived. She's beautiful. Because it's so thin, I'm hitting it with the broiler for like a few minutes. Clay had the really genius idea that next time it's a nice day and we're able to get an order and we'll just walk over there and eat it outside on like a brownstone step. But in the meantime, I'm heating it up and we're gonna watch Naruto and eat it. It's gonna be so, 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 so good. All right, friends, Naruto is watched. I've done my skincare routine for the evening. I really need to do a serum and a moisturizer at night, but 
I am now going to finish the assassin, the royal assassin. I read uh, 20 pages while I was waiting for Clay to get the pizza, so I have about 80 pages left, and I'm gonna sit down and read it now. I'm really jazzed to finish my first book for the month because it's May 5th, happy Cinco de Mayo, and I uh, haven't finished a book yet. But I'm okay with that. This book is long, and it takes me a little longer to read, and I'm obviously almost finished, and I know the next book I think I'm gonna pick up will be a really, really fast read, so not worried over here but uh regardless excited to finish a book and i'm gonna stop delaying and i'm going to i'm gonna do the dang thing and read i finished my book i've completed my first book of the month here is matilda she's part of my pack <laughs> i read this book you know what i mean um i really liked this book i feel like it was so fast paced like the last 200 pages especially were breakneck speed so much was happening so much was coming to a head it just felt like all of a sudden you were just in this boiling pot of water and you just did not like there's nothing you could do about it um also like i'm in a scenario at the end of this book i have no idea how it's going to continue to progress uh the magic is cool there's this element of like skilling which is kind of like mind control or like omniscient in a way. And then there's also wit, which is more like animal magic. Our main character is an assassin, but like so much happens at the end of this book. Like things are really gonna change in the next one. And I'm very curious to see how it's going to occur because we're gonna be doing some traveling, I'm pretty sure in the next one and it's really like the whole world has like everything just went to crap in this book like everything and I'm really excited to see how the next one um, goes and the rest of the series I know in the next couple of trilogies we follow different characters but set in the same world but then the last couple of books bring together some of these characters we're seeing here so I'm really curious to see how all of those stories become interconnected and everything but yeah I liked this a lot it was like wow wow <laughs> i didn't want to put it down so finished my first book of the month which i'm thrilled about i don't really know what i want to read next well that's not true i'm deciding between three books two of them i've already talked about and now there's a third one that's kind of inching its way into my life and we'll see if i just read that instead probably likely but i'll talk more about that tomorrow it's pretty late so i'm gonna go to bed now um, but I just wanted to check in and let you know I finished my book, which is very, very, very exciting. Hi everyone, happy Wednesday. Clay's making coffee in the background. It's honestly very cold and gloomy outside. Quick OOTD is a sweater and leggings because I just couldn't be bothered today. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm holding this camera super weird. Um, but yeah, it's Wednesday. I have a busy day ahead of me. I did finish my book last night, so I'm going to start a new one, which is really great. It's also Survivor Wednesday, which this show has been killing me lately. All my faves are gone. Um, but regardless, I'm interested to see how it's, the thing is gonna pan out. But, but yeah, so, hello, welcome to a new day. We'll chat what book I'm gonna read next later. I still don't know myself, so that's why I need more time. Today's soup is uh, lemon, chicken, and rice with croutons on top because croutons taste good on everything. The soup is a new one for me. I'm excited, it was out of stock the last couple times, so I'm excited to have it in my arsenal of soups, which I eat every day. So I found some holiday candles that we didn't burn in time, I guess, for the holidays, but I figured, what is time anyway? So now it smells like a Christmas tree in my apartment. Matilda, big fan. It's gloomy anyway, so I might as well just pretend like it's Christmas at this point. Right, Millie? Right? <laughs> Hi, pals. So my work day is over. I'm actually about to start cooking dinner. I lost track of time working. So I guess I don't know if that counts necessarily, but it's seven now and I just signed off. Um, but before I do that, I do want to quickly talk about the book I want to read tonight. Survivor starts in an hour, so I need to start cooking. But... I am actually gonna start Full Moon by um, Jim Butcher, I've decided. I know I chatted about two books already in this video, but Full Moon was really calling to me. It's shorter and I know I'll be able to read it quickly, which is what I'm looking for. 
And it's also like a mystery, which I was feeling. Like I wanted to read the guest list because it was a mystery, but I wanted to read Shorefall because it was fantasy. And then I was like, wait, I could have both of those things in Full Moon by Jim Butcher. So I'm gonna pick that up tonight. Um, I'm really excited for Survivor. Oh God, these past couple weeks have been killer though, which I think I've already said. Um, tonight's also my hair wash night. I've been on a bit of a hair journey since this whole thing. I've been trying not to wear makeup and not do, I haven't used any heat on my hair in like three weeks. I've changed my hair routine. I've added like a dandruff shampoo, maybe TMI, but like honestly head and shoulders kind of like saving the game from a shampoo perspective. And then I've been using hair oils and all sorts of things. And I've um, been trying to like let my natural hair oils come back and it's been a real game changer in my hair health and quality. Like who knew? That was a tangent. But anyway, I gotta wash my hair tonight, which means I have to do my hair mask tonight, which I will do during Survivor. But now I'm going to start dinner because boy, oh boy, I am so hungry. So I'm gonna get to cooking right now. So this is what we're working with tonight. I'm actually so excited. It looks so good. It's beef tenderloin, mashed potatoes, and the thing I'm really excited about is the creamed kale. I love kale, fun fact, but Anyway, I'm gonna get started. A feast fit for Survivor. So let's get to probably chopping a bunch of stuff. So I chopped up my thing, seasoned the steak, potatoes are going. I do think I cursed myself a bit because the kale was a little past its prime, so we're just gonna have a meat and potato scenario tonight, which should still be very tasty. Um, I, I mean, this is like the last day of the week to cook this. We have a new one coming tomorrow, so it's definitely our fault, and I'll definitely remember that next time. But sad cream kale, you're not happening. Things are cooking. In the bone, appetite. Just pretend like there's a vegetable here. There's not gonna be one, but pretend. Day 29, and I just remembered this is a two hour episode tonight. I cannot wait. Finished Survivor, which by the way, I'm going to talk about after we watch some Naruto, which we've now started watching because I've just been theorizing end game scenarios for the past like 45 minutes. But anyway, Naruto Shippuden, we're on episode 40. We're just blazing through Shippuden, even faster than Naruto. Hi everyone, so I have just been watching Naruto with Clay, and obviously we watched Survivor earlier. You'll notice I still have my greasy bun in place. And that is because I got too caught up in Survivor. I forgot to do my hair mask, and then it was just too late. So I'm just gonna do it again tomorrow, or I'll try again tomorrow. So I hope you'll forgive my greasy hair for the next 24 hours. One, it's already been greasy, so you've already had to deal with it. And two, I'm sure we can all relate just a little bit. Uh, that being said, I am about to sit down and start Full Moon by Jim Butcher. But I first wanted to discuss Survivor because I'm having such a love-hate relationship right now with it. The season's been amazing, this all winter season, and it was so intense. I feel like there was so much great gameplay at the beginning of the show. The last few episodes have been frustrating, not because I, d okay, so like, spoilers for Survivor if you haven't seen this newest season. I'm just gonna quickly hash it out. Here's how I feel. Tony has been so dominant, which is fine. I'm a huge Tony fan, and Tony's doing a, a fantastic, amazing job. Like, go Tony, these past three episodes. But what is so frustrating is there's all these winners that are just complicit and just cool with being sheep. Like, I don't understand how they're not working together to try to get rid of him. I feel like the only people playing are Tony Sarah, and Sarah will lose to Tony, and then Michelle, who like is the only one who's even remotely self-aware of being on the bottom. She's like, we're all on the bottom. Why are we not going after them? And yet nobody wants to go after Tony, who will clearly beat every single person left in the game. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? So it kind of makes it boring because they're just unwilling to do anything but it's not like if as long as tony wins the winner will not be a bad winner if that makes sense i'm just surprised that all these winners are willing to be just like like what they're doing it's very confusing i don't really get it like all of them are playing for like fourth place it's weird um that being said i do feel like the underdog to win the season aside from tony is like natalie i feel like if she can come back from the edge of extinction 
and do some winning, she could win. She could win. But she has to get Tony out to do, to do that. Anywho, that is enough survivor rambling of the evening i'm gonna start full moon now and try to read for like an hour or so go to bed naruto is also really good right now shippuden is just like so breakneck speed it's really entertaining and i've been liking it a lot where i'm shocked we're on episode 43 already i don't know how that happened i feel like the first 15 episodes of naruto feel like they take forever and now the first 43 episodes of shippuden went like like this but anyway i'm gonna start reading matilda's here Oh, also, side note, I got a silk pillowcase because the internet told me it's better for my hair and skin and it came in the mail today, so that's really exciting. So catch me glowing tomorrow morning with my silk pillowcase from Slip. Things I buy on the internet when, I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna read now. All right, a quick 20 pages read, ebook style. And we've got murders and likely werewolves. Um. Which I kind of guessed. The name of the book is Fool Moon, so, and you can see this ebook is not very long. I think it's longer IRL, but I think I should be able to read through this really quickly. I am getting so tired, so I think I'm actually gonna go to bed soon, but I'm gonna try to get to page 30 tonight before I fall asleep. Good morning, everyone. It's sunny outside. I'm wearing one of the most comfy dresses I own, which, if you're curious, is from Christy Dawn, but I thrifted this actually. Got enough the pre-loved market, which has been, again, like my favorite thing the last couple of months. I have found so many good things pre-loved, um, just like this dress. It's the softest, most comfortable thing in the entire world. Wearing slippers, <laughs> caffeinating, already a hectic day over here. So many meetings and my hair is so greasy, but you know, say lovey. I'm out of chocolate chip banana muffins and I'm so sad about it. And I really, I have more bananas than I really wanted to make more today. But I don't think I have time, but maybe after work. Guys, I made muffins while I was on mute during a meeting. I'm thrilled, I can't wait to eat them. Today, another soup. I honestly would be lost with good stock because recently I've had like 15 minutes to make and eat lunch between meetings. I try not to complain about work because I'm obviously grateful to have a job, especially right now. But things at work are a little tense and a little crazy and it's stressing me out for a variety of reasons which i won't go into a lot but it's somehow thursday i have no idea how that happened and i honestly cannot wait to read the dresden files after work today man oh man also oh, i just love my dress it's a little thing so I eat my soup i'm also just so thrilled about this edition did i mention this i had such a book floor problem i still do and someone commented on a video and said, why don't you put your books whoop, up there? Absolute game changer. Look at all my floor space again. She's looking so much better now. So thrilled about that. It's a little things in life, you know? But anyway, heating up my soup, scarfing it down, carrot ginger, probably my favorite. It has a little spice to it. But anyway, just wanted to pop in. Hi everyone, I have just finished up work. I've already changed into pajamas. It's just kind of one of those days. I logged off work a little early too. It's just after six. And I am going to do some reading now. I'm really looking forward to just kind of unwinding tonight, disconnecting, doing a little bit of pampering, and not really thinking about the day to day. Um, all that being said though, I'm very excited to read some more of Harry Dresden. I read 30 pages last night. And it's pretty much exactly what I expected to be right off the bat, which is perfect. It has our spunky main character. We have some sort of gruesome murder in the beginning of it. We have a myriad of random female characters, but I'm expecting to like this one even more. And I think it's gonna regardless be a quick read. So I've read 30 pages. I'm gonna try to sit now and read about 50 more pages. Then I'm gonna start dinner and watch The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Specifically for dinner, I've decided to make a rather indulgent meal of cheeseburgers and french fries, and I'm gonna make cheese fries, not just regular fries, cheese fries and with garlic. They're gonna be super good and super bad, and I'm gonna do my hair mask tonight, maybe even a face mask tonight. It's going to be a nice evening, and I can't believe it's already Thursday. This week flew by in unprecedented fashion. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna sit here with Matilda, and uh, 
do my reading of full moon so i'm excited and i finished a book for the month so far when i read that so maybe i'll be able to get a decent chunk of the way through this maybe even finish it tonight that would be awesome so we'll see i'll keep you guys posted but regardless those are my plans look at this five yeah five star service also do you guys like my uh what was it gonna focus this mug emily got it for us there's a pug on it and i think you can read the words for yourself but clay made me a latte oh, just what i need books and lattes hi everyone so i've been reading as i said i was i've just passed the 80 page mark of my ebook of 284 pages so i'm making good progress i read 50 ebook pages just now and i'm really liking this book oh, i'm tired even with that latte but i'm liking it a lot i feel like one of the cool elements of the story aside from the, the mystery and the characters and things is there's a lot of magical lore which i just find fascinating i think one of the reasons why i personally love fantasy so much is kind of the historical element to it obviously there's a whole bunch of new worlds and magic systems to learn and explore which i always find fascinating but generally speaking there's also elements of fantasy that are like lore based and tend to persist story after story or there's like a general acceptance of what certain things are and then people take tweaks to them or completely redo them in other books but in this story they're kind of exploring a lot of the classic magical creatures and the different uh interpretations of these magical creatures through time so like for this book it's about werewolves but there's different types and and incarnations of what a werewolf is it can be someone who transforms into a beast it can be someone who has the soul of a beast inside of them they're two different things and stuff like that so i find the this element of that the series really interesting and harry dresden is always doing a lot of research and um as well as like trying to solve the mystery so i feel like there's like an educational element to it even though obviously it's like education on the fantastical which i'm always down to learn more about but i definitely think that's a piece of the series i really enjoy oh my gosh i'm so tired oh but i've now again whoop, i've now read that 80 pages so i'm gonna start dinner now i'm really excited it's gonna be so bad for me i'm pumped to make some like homemade cheesy cheese home fry potato things and a burger so i'm gonna go ahead and get cooking and i'm gonna watch the real housewives of beverly hills because <laughs> I just need some frivolous, I um, this is maybe a little embarrassing, but for my favorite shows, I love reading recaps. Um, I do it for Survivor, I do it, I go on Reddit too for Survivor and the challenge, but Vulture does hilarious recaps of a lot of my favorite Bravo shows, and I actually subscribe to New York Mag online so I can read Vulture Bravo recaps, which honestly, should be embarrassed but it brings me so much joy that i'm not gonna be embarrassed about it but if you're a real housewives fan the vulture recaps are so funny and the person who reviews it reviews beverly hills calls it rich women doing things and it's so true it's just a show especially beverly hills because they don't always fight it's just a show of rich women doing things together or separately it's just so funny anyways i watch as much as i enjoy the show i almost love reading the recaps just as much so i'm gonna do that <laughs> if you haven't checked out vulture bravo recaps they're the best i love them but anyway time to make dinner housewives are on my flowers are still thriving that we got last week i think they need more water but it's time for cheeseburgers cheeseburgers it's happening Burgers are burgering. Clay got me a fancy burger spatula, which I'm pretty jazzed about. Um, and for rise, are cooking. Onions are cooked. I'm pickling some shallots. Things are happening. I'm about to cut up this tomato and those buns. Yummy. Burgers are all set, looking beautiful. I did want to say I cleaned off my spatula before, you know, raw and cooked. I just topped my potatoes with some cheese, and I'm about to use this bad boy. Honestly. This spatula is incredible. I had a really bad one before and now this has like changed my life. It's a little thing so I can really get under stuff. Ha -cha -cha -cha. Hi pals, I'm doing a hair mask because um, it is my shower night. Clay's currently doing the dishes and then we're gonna watch some Naruto, but I thought 
while I'm waiting for him to finish doing the dishes, I would go through my hair stuff I have been doing. I have been getting some questions about what I've been doing. I really want to say I am no expert and I'm still like trying to figure out my own hair, but I do have a few products that have been working for me and my hair. So I have a really dry, brittle hair. I have color treatment. I use too much heat, <laughs> all sorts of terrible things. Um, so for the past month, I haven't been, well, three weeks, I haven't been using any heat and I'm trying to introduce more moisture back in my hair, shower, well, wash it less, not shower less, still showering, um, and um, get my like scalp and head like more moisturized to keep it from being really dry and itchy. So obviously I have shampoo and conditioner. For shampoo, I've been using, I've been rotating off um, just like my normal deep hydrating conditioner, but also using head and shoulders, which has been real lifesaver not gonna lie to you guys um and then after and before shower i do a few things so i've been using the olaplex this is like i bought this early in the year about halfway through it hair perfector and this gives your hair more protein and because my hair is really brittle i've been using this i'm not super versed on hair masks i use honestly i've never been a hair masker until this year it's been like a thing i also have in my shower a moroccan oil one that's really nice and i think a lot more affordable than this this is really expensive for how little product you get so i think once i finish this i'm gonna try a new one that's hopefully more like better value but obviously i bought this from my hair salon so i was like i gotta use it before i buy a new one i've also been using this because again I have a dry scalp it's living proof dry scalp treatment and this has been so nice I put this in when my hair is damp and it's literally like a serum for your head it just like makes your head if you have a dry if you have dry skin on your face like me and on your body your head's probably dry too at least that's what I've discovered about myself this has been amazing and then the last thing is more recent the other two products I've been using since January but I got this I don't even know how to say this. Brygio Don't Despair Repair Strengthening Hair Oil. Um, and I've been putting this in after I shower, just in the ends, and it smells so good. And what I think I like this about this the most is I feel like it makes my hair less frizzy. Um, and therefore, like, because I'm not trying to use heat on it at all. This I feel like makes me a lot more confident in how my hair looks without heat. And there's a flower on the inside. This I bought during the Sephora sale. Um, and I would say like this is small, but you literally use like none every time you use it. So I feel like this is actually gonna last a long time versus this has not lasted very long. So I only use this once a week. And I've been really only very good about doing that for the past six weeks. So I, this I think has been doing good stuff, but like it's expensive and it's not gonna last me a long time. Anyway, that's a ramble. That's what I'm gonna do with my hair. Um, and I've personally seen a lot of improvement. You guys have also been super helpful. I mentioned in a video um, last week. I was like, oh, my hair's really dry. And I had a couple comments being like, you're probably washing it too much. And I was like, huh, never thought about that before. And then I did some research and I was like, huh, I'm probably washing it too much. So now I'm trying to let like my natural oil help my hair too. And that has been great. Like my hair is softer than it's ever been. But anyway, I've been rambling now. Hopefully, I think Clay's almost done with dishes, so it's back to Naruto, and I'm gonna let this sit for like 30, 40 minutes or so. It's beginning to smell a lot like Christmas, even though it's May. Sometimes I think I'm hilarious. And the Naruto Shippuden watchathon continues. We're on episode 45 of Shippuden. Honestly, breezing through it. I love Yamato. New character. Making an impact quickly. What are your thoughts, Clay? Na our Naruto watch and Shippuden specifically, actually. Give me your hard thoughts on Shippuden. Yeah. I really like Shippuden. I like that it's more adult. I like the stakes have been raised. I like that they did the three-year gap, so instead of just full training arcs for every new thing they do, mm -hmm. you kind of get surprised with new things, new capabilities and strengths and powers they have. Um, not Any that I don't like a good classic training, training arc. arc, but it's nice to have a, just the powers right there. Um, who's your who's your fave character post three year gap? Without any spoilers, I guess. Well, who's your fave character post three year gap? Like who came back and you were surprised, or like you like them more now? Would be Sakura. I agree. They made her character so much cooler in Shippuden. Yeah, 
because she's always kind of the, 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 the weakest of the three. Yeah. In, in Naruto, but in, in, in Shippuden. I also think she's a lot more emotionally mature, too, in Shippuden. Yeah. I like that her relationship with Naruto is a lot warmer. Yeah. Affectionate. Not from, like, a romantic standpoint. But, like, as a yeah. comrades and things. Yeah, yeah I know. I, Shippuden is great. And the animation is great. Hi. It's me. Clay and I watched a lot of Naruto, and now it's later than I planned it to be. But I am buzzing and start reading again. My goal is to probably get to page 150 of the ebook tonight, and then maybe take a lunch tomorrow and do a bit more reading during my work day. I'm hopeful that I'll have a bit of time to take like 30 minutes to read during the day, which would be super, super nice. So that is my hope. And then, I mean, honestly, if I can get to page like 180 of 280, I'd be really pleased with that. Given that I'm pretty sure, I mean, obviously the ebook is 284 pages, but the physical book I think is much longer. So I'll check on the actual length tomorrow. But for now, I'm gonna get to reading because I am tired and I could be falling asleep any second. <laughs> Who knows? Good morning, everyone. It is super gloomy outside. The polar vortex is coming. It's gonna be freezing tomorrow, like in the 40s. But I wanted to quickly just say good morning. This is what I'm wearing today. Some like linen pants that are definitely just, you know, super comfy. And then this uh, sweater hoodie that I got a while ago from Anthropology. I wanted to document something though, and that is my hair. And there's a gut person honking outside, but I might not look like it to you. Let me flip you around. Best hair day I've ever woken up to in my entire life <laughs> without any heat or hair products. I don't really know the change. I think it has to be the silk pillowcase because I always shower at night and I tend to go to bed with wet hair and my hair always comes out like super frizzy, like kind of puffy and then it'll calm down throughout the day or like the next day. But this morning I woke up and my hair is like the softest it's ever been, completely manageable, no frizz. I don't know if it's a silk pillowcase yet, but I'm suspicious it is. I bought that because the internet told me to, but I didn't really, I didn't believe it. But if my hair's gonna look like this every time I wake up, which I know might not look great to some people, but like this to me, no heat, totally wearable outside. I've just never had hair that looks has looked like this before. Um, I'm like kind of shook, but I need to test the pillowcase more before I can confirm entirely, but I'm like, wow. <laughs> I keep touching it, it's so soft. Clay brought out his Friday mug, which I respect, but he also made a fresh pot of coffee. This little guy that we got from Amazon a month ago, MVP of our household. We bought the um, like a five cup one, which has been really nice because it's just the two of us. And we've just been grinding our own coffee every day. And it's really nice. I love black coffee. I love lattes too, but it's nice to have variety, especially because during my work week, I never drink lattes they were kind of just a weekend thing and at work i would i would drink black coffee so it's a really nice um thing to have oh we're, we're kind of coordinating our mugs today also we just got our new coffee order in it, this shelf is just baking materials and like eight bags of coffee from Stumptown. <laughs> all right matilda <laughs> just, just, she literally is just like this is She's like, busy day, busy 12 o'clock meeting right here. All right, world, it's time to make a delicious and unhealthy lunch of chicken fried rice, Trader Joe's. Fry this bad boy up. I know I usually make my own homemade fried rice. We had this in the freezer, so I'm gonna heat it up. I'm gonna add an egg and some sriracha and some like garlic and ginger to keep it, keep it fresh, but it's gonna be so good. Trader Joe's coming in clutch. I just added sriracha soy sauce and another egg, so. Should be good. Today's company just made my day because they sent him a box of Levain <gasps> cookies, which I don't even know if you guys have heard of Levain. The best cookie place in all of New York City. I'm gonna heat one of these bad boys up right now and eat it. I could cry. Thanks, Clay's company. <laughs> all right, she's fresh out of the oven. Levain cookies are one of the few things I will wait in line for. Let's see how gooey she is in the middle. Look. Look at this glistening, beautiful thing. I'm gonna go eat this whole thing 
and then try not to fall asleep in the middle of my work day. I'm also going to take a 30 minute break and try to get some Harry Dresden in right now while I eat this cookie. I got to page 150 last night, which is great, and I'll give you guys an update of my thoughts and feelings, but my goal is to get to 180 before I swap over to my weekend reading blog. Oh, there goes my computer cord. <laughs> no respect for my office. Hi everyone, I'm wrapping up the end of my work day, but I'll do a summary in a little bit, but I first wanted to quickly do my thoughts and feelings on full moon so far. I was able to take a little bit of time to read today, like 20 or so minutes, and I got to page 175 of 284 of the ebook, which I'm really pleased with. Overall, I'm actually really liking this. I'm definitely liking it more than the first one. I think it's a little surprising for some reasons. One, just pure and simple, the content. It's about werewolves, this particular book, which honestly, werewolves are not one of my favorite fantastical creatures. I find them to be like not particularly interesting. Maybe it's a carryover from my Twilight days where I'm just like anti-werewolf. Who knows? But generally speaking though, I'm finding it interesting and I think I hinted to this when I was first talking about it, but there's like different types of werewolves and there's a lot more history that Harry Dresden goes into, which I like a lot. Aside from that too, another thing about this book that I'm just happy to see is that the story is a lot more dynamic, I feel like. Um, hello, Millie. Um, in that, when I first picked up the series, I was a little worried it was gonna kind of be like mission of the week, but there's no like general growth. We don't really see the character change. It's just kind of like a different new supernatural thing that they have to overcome and it's interesting. But it does look like there's going to be either a larger plot or each book definitely impacts the next book. Harry Dresden has a certain set of skills that he's always had, but I can definitely see him getting more experienced through time. I know time passes, so I feel like he's going to gain new abilities and he's also going to gain new perspective um, through, you know, the different mysteries he encounters. And you're kind of already seeing that, like how he's treated other characters in the past and realizing that he can't do everything alone, blah, blah, blah. Another element too, I feel like the characters that we encountered as the main side characters in the first one are becoming less kind of cardboard cutouty, like stereotypes. Don't get me wrong, there's still some sentences where I just kind of roll my eyes. Like Harry Dresden referenced a woman's earlobes and I was like, really? <laughs> and just in general, like some of the characterizations and the details that we focus on are either peculiar or dated, but this was written in 2001. Larger than that though, I like Harry Dresden. I'm seeing the story kind of evolve, which I'm appreciating, and I'm just hoping we kind of move on from this like cops versus Harry Dresden stuff happened in Chicago to maybe like a special force that he's on and they're like working together. I want to say like more deliberate teamwork, which I'm feeling might happen later, which I would appreciate, but I like this one. I feel like it's paced better. It feels less cheesy. And I think it's a good sign for the rest of the books to come. Um, and I'm hopeful the next one is even better. But generally the important part is I like Harry Dresden. I like the, the mystery. Matilda just somehow turned off the air conditioning. So I'm gonna figure that out in a second. But I just wanted to wrap, pop in and let you know my general thoughts and feelings about this. I also looked up the page count of this book. It's over 400 pages, which I did not realize. And I'm like 65% of the way done. Um, so I actually read a lot. Didn't realize how much I read this weekend because that ebook, she just turned the air conditioning on. Okay, I'm gonna go check that out. Yeah, Millie, I'm looking at you. Um, but I just wanted to give you my thoughts and feelings about this book. Hi, pals. I just put away the old work computer over on top of Matilda's cage. It's official home. Um, and I just want to wrap up this vlog. I'm about to start another vlog. So do not fret world if anyone is fretting. We always vlog it in this household. But I just wanted to quickly wrap up everything I read, starting first with The Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. I read the last 150 or 160 pages of this. I really liked this book. I really felt this second one is really expanding the world. I appreciated the growth and the character and everything. It basically was doing exactly what I was hoping and that it got better. I'm really excited to see where the third one takes off. I feel like we're gonna see even more kingdoms and different things like that beyond just the confines of the castle where we really been in for the majority of the story so far. So I'm curious about that. But yeah, I finished the last 150, 160 pages of this. And then I hopped into Full Moon by Jim Butcher, which I read 65% of this, which means 257 pages. Um, and I'm really liking this. I just went into detail, right, in this past clip. Uh, but yeah, so that means I've read over 400 pages this week, which I'm really pleased with, especially when it comes to like longer fantasy like this. I tend to read this slower 
just because the you know just trying to make sure I read everything versus some books like I would say like the Dresden Files I read really quickly but anyway those are all the books I read this vlog hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you soon with another video soon goodbye